Okay, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to this uh, tutorial on how to draw apparatus um, in a scientific diagram. The problem with drawing uh, diagrams is that some of you out there are very good drawers, I know, and then others of you, like me, are not. I haven't got an artistic bone in my body. But I can draw a good scientific diagram because I have learned the knack of doing it, and that's what I'm going to pass on to you right now. The reason why you'd bother drawing a diagram is because if you're setting up an experiment that's got maybe a Bunsen burner on the bench and you've got a tripod over the top of it, you might have a gauze mat on top of that, you could have a beaker that's half full of water in which there's a thermometer supported by a retort stand and you get the idea. It can get very very complicated to write and to describe and it's true when they say a picture tells a thousand words. So often drawing the setup of your equipment it's easier to communicate what you've actually done. All right, there are a couple of basic rules and I want to start with those first. And they are at the top of this page that you should have in front of you here. Okay, let's zoom in here a little bit. All right, three golden rules at the top. When it comes to drawing apparatus, I want you to remember these things. Always use a pencil. If you draw apparatus without a pencil, guess what? I'm gonna be mean and nasty and make you draw it again. A pencils are not negotiable. If you don't have a pencil, you borrow one, you get one, you ask me. You always draw in pencil. The other one is you always use a ruler if you're drawing a straight line. If you're not drawing a straight line, then no, you don't have to use a ruler, of course. Okay, the other one is you draw two dimensional figures. Now what I mean by that, if you have a look at the first diagram, how it really looks, that's this diagram over here. For example, that's a diagram showing three dimensions. It shows the depth of the plate, for example. The beaker down here in the test tube, it's, they've got circles on the top to sh illustrate the fact that you know there's depth. This side is closer and that side is further away. Now, in scientific diagrams, we are not interested in doing that. We want to draw 2D diagrams like the one that you see well, like anything that you see in this proper diagram. By proper diagram, that is how it actually should look in a scientific diagram. By the way, you will probably see occasionally different versions of proper diagrams, and that's perfectly okay. So long as they resemble the apparatus they're meant to look like, provided they're done in uh, using a ruler, they've been drawn in pencil, they're 2D, and the other golden rule is they must be a side on view. I do not want you to draw them done at an angle or done from above or even done from below. So there are golden rules that we're gonna be referring back to. Now, I'm gonna give myself a get out of jail clause here. I'm doing this on an iPad and it's very, very tricky to draw uh, straight lines, to rule lines on an iPad. You're doing it on a pen and paper. So your lines will be ruled and they will be done in pencil. I apologize for the fact that my lines may not be straight. They will be a little bit sloppy, uh, sloppier than I'd like, simply because I'm drawing on an iPad using a stylus or my finger. So with that uh, warning, let's move on. I'm not gonna start at the top. I'm gonna go down to some of the more commonly one, used ones. All right, oh, one other thing, a, suge a strong suggestion. On this sheet, you'll see that you've been given this much space, this much space to use. I do not want to see a diagram that only takes up half the space or even three quarters of the space. I want you to use the available space. I'm always chipping students for drawing diagrams too small. Never ever am I having a go at them for drawing them too big. Big is beautiful. All right, let's go and we're gonna start with a beaker. Okay, so I'll switch to drawing mode. Now remember, apologies, but I can't use a ruler here. The trick with a beaker is, uh, what color are we? Let's do this in black. The trick with a beaker is to rule the line at the bottom first. Okay, now that's well and good. Now what a lot of people want to do then is to rule a line straight up from that and straight up from there. The problem is that that's going to give you square corners there and there. And beakers don't have square corners. They have rounded corners. So we need to allow for that. All right, and the way we allow for that is we rule 
the line down leaving a space in the corner so those two lines are not connecting and I'm ruling a line over here to do the same thing okay now all up to now we've used rulers what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my page sideways and I'm going to try and neatly hand draw those corners in now remembering yours are going to be much neater and more evenly matched up because you're doing it in pencil you'll be able to rub them out can I give you some examples of uh, I'll give you an example here of a corner a mistake that a students often do is I'll do a corner that bulges it either bulges to the left or to the right or it bulges below they don't bulge they should be smooth something like that that's actually pretty good now you might notice the diagram in the middle for this one actually shows the spout now it's okay to draw that or it's okay to not draw it like I've done here notice there's no lid you only ever draw lids when the container you're using actually has a lid if you would like to draw the spout then this is where you start from with this side being the same height as this side and then you should erase down a small amount on one side doesn't matter which one and then draw the little spout poking up like that pause now and draw the beaker bearing in mind that it's nice and wide have a go okay now we're going to have a go at drawing the test tube which is this one here as you know a test tube is also a glass container that holds fluids the difference is a test tube has a is much skinnier than a beaker and it can't stand up by itself because it's got a round bottom so let's have a go at drawing a test tube now I'm going to use up most of the height and I'm going to draw two parallel lines now there's no way this diagram could be mistaken for a beaker if yours looks like maybe it's a beaker maybe it's a test tube then can I suggest that you rub out one of your lines and make it narrower for example if you had one line there and one line there then it's kind of eh, which way is it so make sure it's obvious that it's a beaker now on my diagram there I've got the lip going out either side some test tubes have that and it's okay to draw that if you would like to do that now it's also okay to leave it off I'm going to try and draw it in one there and one like so no I don't like that one because it's not symmetrical so I do that one so they're looking reasonably symmetrical now the last bit we don't use a ruler because we are now drawing the base and the base is rounded your two lines here and here should be at the same height in the box so then we simply get our pencil and we round it off now yeah apologies again but I am drawing with a iPad which is a hopeless way to do it so I'm going to try and get those to meet up no let's try that again and there to there all right now obviously as you look at that that's going to need to be rubbed out and made neater an example of some I'll, I'll show you some errors that students often make with this one often they will make it so it's flat like so test tubes don't look like that so that's no good often they'll do it so it's uneven notice how that's the left side of this doesn't match the right side so that'd be no good you'd rub that out and you would start again and that is about as neat as I can get it on the iPad the last one I wanted to show you on this page is the tripod and hopefully the first thing you'll notice the tripod whose name literally means three legs is not drawn with three legs it's only ever drawn with two and those two should actually be symmetrical in other words if you put a mirror down the middle of that diagram the left side should really be a mirror image of the right side a really common error students make is they produce diagrams that look something like this now that looks pretty good so far but then the other leg sticks out like that and very often students struggle to rectify that so I'll show you how we're going to do it so we start with our ruled line at the top but what I'm going to get you to do is from the middle of that ruled line is 
Now, whether or not you draw that whole line in or whether or not you just make that little mark down there, you're marking where the center of the black line is, but down at the bottom of the page. If you make that mark there, what you can then do is measure out, say, I don't know, three centimeters, five centimeters, whatever it is, to the right of that line, and three or five centimeters to the left of that line. That then gives you the chance to, as I change colors here, you can also actually make a little mark from there, up on the top, down to that point. So we've got our first line there, we've got our second line there, ruled of course. So when you get rid of the red pencil lines, it should look something like this. And because you made the measurements, the legs are kicking out at the same angle in each direction and it doesn't look like a you know, a can-can dancing girl or something like that. Okay, we're going to move on to the next sheet and look at some of the diagrams there. If you haven't yet finished any of the diagrams on this page, complete these ones first before we move on.